The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so I'm going to work through problem number 15 for Physics 2020, um, exam 2, year 2006. And this problem says, intravenous infusions are often made under the influence of gravity as shown in figure intravenous. And basically that uh, is the figure that's given on the supplemental sheet for the uh, exam. I've actually reproduced the figure here. It goes on to say, assuming the fluid has a density of 1.25 grams per centimeters cubed, at what height, H, should the bottle be placed so that the liquid pressure is 10 millibars over standard pressure, or sorry, standard atmospheric pressure? Assume the velocities of the flow are negligible. Okay, so, um, I, again, I have the uh, intravenous figure reproduced here as best as I could with the drawing, just kind of bear with it, but we have basically an intravenous bottle um, and I've got and the fluid in the bottle is being delivered intravenously into the, uh, someone's arm and um, we're trying to find out at what height should we place this bottle in order for uh, basically the pressure uh, at the entrance uh, into the arm is 10 millibars over standard pressure. So how are we going to go about solving this problem? Well, basically this comes down to uh, Bernoulli's principle. Okay, so this is so Bernoulli's principle um, just really involves um, conservation of uh, energy, mechanical energy. And basically what it says is that um, your kinetic energy plus your potential energy is going to be constant because you cannot create or um, destroy energy. So uh, the amount of total energy, mechanical energy that you have in your system is going to be constant anywhere in the system. Okay? And so that's basically what it's, the concept that it's derived on. But um, it actually says that you have some reference uh, pressure plus um, your potential energy plus your kinetic energy, right, is going to be constant. Okay, so that's kind of the same form that we have here. Your kinetic energy plus your potential energy is going to be constant. Here is your poten potential energy term, and here is your kinetic energy term. And we have uh, P here, basically your reference, uh, your reference pressure. Um, depending on where you're located, that pressure could be different. But if you're talking about within the, si the same system, you're comparing two things in the same system, then these two pressures will actually will be the same. All right, so um, basically, if we know that this is constant, then um, if we had... If we chose two points, let's say that we chose, this is point one, okay, and let's say that this is, uh, let's say that, um, you know, we had point one here, and we chose another point, point two, basically it's saying that, you know, um, the total the total mechanical energy in point one and the total mechanical energy point two are going to be the same, although they may have different potential and kinetic energies. And understanding that, we could usually relate the two in order to solve for any piece of information that we're trying to solve for. So in this case, we're trying to find the height at which this uh, bottle is supposed to be placed so that, um, so that when it's actually injected into the arm, it's going to be, the pressure is going to be 10 millibars. And in this problem it says that um, that uh, it's over a standard pressure 
and assume that the velocities of the flow are negligible. So if we have two points, let's say that we're now going to take let's say we take a point here right at the very beginning and we take point two to be at the injection point. So we had P1 plus rho G rho G H point one plus rho velocity squared at one is equal to Okay, so the total mechanical energy at located at point one is equal to the total mechanical energy at point two, okay, using these two as our points. Now, <coughs> at point one, we assume that's where the, the, the liquid is starting. If we could basically take one particle or one, uh, isolate one part of the liquid, if we're starting at, the, at this point, its velocity is zero, okay, because it's not moving yet. And so, at point one, this thing could go, this whole thing can go to zero because the velocity is equal to zero. Also, but it says, we're going to assume that the flows of the velocity are negligible in the whole system. That's what it gives us. So, we can assume that, since that's negligible, that term is also going to go to zero. Okay? We know that uh, the two reference pressures are going to be the same because we're talking about the same system. And um, basically, um, we're, so basically now, well, we're not going to assume that this is going to be negligible yet. We're assuming that it's going to be negligible in the velocities, but in reality, it's not negligible. And so, um, the, the potential energy at point two, since it's basically here, is zero. Okay? And we know that this is constant. So we know that rho g h one is equal to the kinetic and all the kinetic energy at point two. Okay? Which is equal to some constant, in this particular case, it's 10 millibars. Okay, so <clears throat> since we're going to assume that the velocities are negligible, we can now just say that this, all this potential energy basically was converted to the kinetic energy, okay, we, which we know is going to equal to 10 millibars. That's our constant pressure. So, let's see here. Let's make some room. So we know that all the potential energy basically was converted to the kinetic energy, which is 10 millibars. So now we have a relationship where we can just solve for H now. Basically, H is going to be your 10 millibars divided by your density times gravity, okay? All right, we can basically convert our pressure, which is 10 millibars, and we know that there are um, there's a thousand millibars in one bar, and there are in one bar, there's 10 to the 5 pascals. Okay, pascals is a unit of pressure. And uh, so the bars will cancel out, the millibars will cancel out, and we're left with, this is pressure, 
is equal to thousand pascals. All right. <laughs> now, um, so we now have our pressure in terms of uh, an SI unit, which is pascals. And if you know what pascal is, a pascal is a newton per meter squared because pressure is a force per area. So pressure. defined as a force per area, so that's how we have newtons per meter squared, okay? And so now we can basically find the um, density, we can convert the density, so the density now is 1.25 grams Per centimeter cubed, okay, but we know that um, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram, and we know that there's a hundred centimeters in one meter, but we want to cube this whole quantity because uh, we have centimeters cubed here, so we need to cube this whole quantity. The density, when you convert that, is actually equal to um, twelve fifty kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, so now that we've converted all of our parameters into SI units, or well, units into SI units, we can now substitute in for the height. The height is actually going to be um, the pressure, which is 10 millibars, but we found that to be 1,000 pascals, okay? Um, but a pascal, again, is newtons per meter squared, and we're going to divide that by the density, which is 1,250 kilograms per meters cubed times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's going to see we get, um, we have a kilograms, meters, so kilograms, meters per second squared. So between this, this, and that, that's a newton. Okay. And so that will cancel out with this newton. Now we have a meters cubed on the denominator, a meter squared in the numerator. So it's going to cancel out both of those and we're going to left with one meters in the denominator but when you divide by something that's in the denominator it moves up to the numerator so that's going to be a meters in the numerator which is uh, the unit of length which is what we need for height. So when we solve this we get um, 0 0.0816 meters, okay, meters, which is equal to approximately 8.2 centimeters. And if we look on our exam and we look at the solutions, we have 10 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 1 meter, and 12 meters, and so we don't have anything that's uh, that we got for an answer. So obviously, then it has to be uh, uh, the answer has to be none of none of the choices are correct. So. So I guess the uh, trick to this problem was knowing that you needed to use Bernoulli's principle and uh, given that the velocities were negligible we could, we could ignore the um, potential, I mean sorry, the kinetic energy term and then we're just left with potential energy and that was equal to so, uh, something that's constant, a constant pressure, in this case it was 10 millibars 
and then we could just manipulate this equation to solve for the height. When we got that, it was um, 8.2 centimeters, which wasn't one of our choices. So the answer is actually none of the choices are correct. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.